Okay, so without using a calculator, let's see if you can figure out this math problem right here. Now the problem is the following. We have a bracket, negative four cubed over negative four in parentheses squared and bracket to the negative two power. Now this is a uh, multiple choice question. So the right answer is one of these options here. Let's go through uh, the selection. So A is 1 16th, B is negative 16, C is 16, D is four, and E is negative four. All right, so the only rule here is no calculator. And uh, if you could figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's go ahead and take one more look at the question. And there is no rush here. Matter of fact, to do this problem uh, correctly, uh, there is, a, no, I wouldn't say a lot of steps, but it's more than just one or two quick steps. So whatever you do here, write everything out step by step. So if you get this wrong, as I go through the solution, you can kind of identify it. But I suspect that most people that are gonna have a tough time with this problem are going to make an error right here and right here. Now, of course, I'll show you what I'm talking about in just one second, but let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer is A, 1 16th. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and A plus, a 100% and a certificate of excellence for being a certified professional expert in the area of working with powers and exponents, especially negative exponents, because these tend to confuse a lot of students. Now, if you are uh, more confused than ever, well, don't worry about this. By the time this video finishes, you too will be a certified professional expert. And uh, let's go and get into this right now. All right, so uh, let's suppose that you're just looking at this problem and you're saying to yourself, hmm, you know, I really don't know what to do here. Uh, well, guess what? If this is a, a test question or an exam question and you're not getting penalized, you know, for uh, the wrong answers, uh, just guess. Maybe uh, you're feeling like, you know, D is my lucky letter today, so I'm just going to select. So uh, for those of you that are math students, remember, okay, if you're not going to get penalized for a multiple choice question, never, ever, ever leave a, um, a question blank. And that goes for any uh, test. I don't want to go off on too many tangents here. So hopefully all of you took a guess, but you got to be careful uh, when you are guessing, because sometimes uh, you'll see your right answer. You'll be like, oh, wait a minute. I see my answer here. I, I got this. I'm going to do this. So maybe it's like um, uh, negative four cubed. This is squared. So negative by negative, maybe this is like a positive uh, times a negative two. Maybe somehow this is like a positive 16. That looks like pretty good to me. So you see your answer or you're seeing that maybe logically you could kind of get to this answer. Well, you got to be very careful with that because the selections on multiple choice uh, exams are designed to have like the results of common errors or common misunderstandings. So just because you see your answer, you know, don't feel like, hey, you got this right. The only way to really know what you're doing is to in fact have the math skills to figure this thing out. Now, this particular problem, again, is going to be a bit confusing, or if you did have a tough time with it, it's because of this and this, I suspect. Okay, now you're gonna see what I'm gonna talk about in just one second. And uh, let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so first things first, we kind of have two parts of this problem. So we have this whole inside expression, all of this to the negative two power. So we have to figure out what is all this equal to, okay, inside these brackets. So once we figure this out, then we'll take that to the negative two power. So this will be like kind of part one of the problem. And then part two will be taking what the, all this is to the negative two power. So let's go and get into this right now. And here is what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the inside stuff right here. Negative four cubed over negative uh, four in parentheses squared. So as I've indicated a couple of times, uh, these things right here 
can confuse uh, students or confuse people. Again, you're not using your calculator. And even if you're using your calculator, you could easily type this into your calculator wrong. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what these things here mean. Okay, so negative four cubed and negative four in parentheses squared. They mean two different things. So let's go ahead and take a look at this right now. All right, so negative four cubed. All right, now I keep kind of referencing that this is confusing to students or to people who are doing this problem without a calculator. So here is what negative four cubed means. Now you have to consider uh, the order of operations PEMDAS, all right? So we have a power going on here. We don't have any parentheses in this problem, but E stands for exponents of power. So this uh, three, okay, this cube right here is only kind of affecting this positive four. Okay, so what you're doing here is you're cubing four. So really this is the opposite of the result of cubing four, okay, or the negative of the result of four cubed. Okay, that's effectively what's going on. This is not negative four times negative four times negative four. Now, even if the, this was the case, you still would get uh, pretty much the same answer because the result, this would be negative times negative, positive times negative. So you would still end up with a negative value. But if this was even, this would confuse a lot of students. So just make sure you don't uh, interpret this as, oh, negative four cubed as negative four times negative four times negative four. That's not what this means. Okay, this means take this and then take the opposite of that. So it means this, you can use parentheses to kind of break this down. So four times four times four, and then we have a negative in front of this. Now, a lot of these things will cross cancel, these fours, but I'm gonna kind of break this down step by step so we can kind of just review and uh, really, you know, kind of compare and contrast this expression without parentheses to a power with parentheses because negative four in parentheses squared means take negative four and multiply it by itself two times. All right, so uh, just to be crystal clear on that, this is what we're going to have to do. So uh, four times four times four, we'll take the negative of that and then negative times the negative, this will be positive. All right, so let's go and do that right now. So negative four cubed will be uh, the opposite or negative of four times four times four. Four times four times four is 64, so that's a negative 64. And then a negative four squared is negative times negative four, negative four times negative four, which is, of course, positive. All right, so this is what all that is equal to, negative 64 over a positive 16. All right, so we have a negative divided by a positive, so this whole value is negative. Now, some of you... Um, this is a very common question. I just thought of it right now. So let me go ahead and just talk about this expression real quick right here. So uh, in mathematics, uh, and this is a good question as well. So we have negative 64, negative 64 over, uh, over positive 16. So sometimes uh, people get confused. They're like, well, is this the same thing as a negative 64 over positive 16? What about a positive 64 over negative uh, 16? Are these equivalent? In other words, we have the negative sign up here in the numerator, and then here it's like outside uh, or in front of the uh, number or the fraction, and then over here it's down in the denominator. Well, all of these are equivalent, and kind of the uh, best uh, way to write this is a negative value. So we have a negative divided by positive. This whole thing is negative. So when a value is negative, you want to put that negative sign right here. But whether you have it like this or this or like this, these things both mean this, all right? So they're not, you know, you're not wrong by leaving your answer like uh, this as long as uh, leaving the negative sign up in the numerator, as long as you understand it, it is a negative value. All right, so just a common question that comes up, but that is what all of this stuff is equal to, right? Negative 64 over 16. Of course, we could take this a step further because a negative divided by a positive uh, is a negative and 64 divided by 16 is four. So this is a negative four. Now, of course, we could have just cross canceled a bunch of these fours right here, but I wanted to kind of break this down, um, you know, without, you know, too much confusion. But anyways, all of this now is equal to negative four. So our problem is this now. All right, so we did this negative four cubed over negative four in parentheses squared, and we determined that it's all equal to negative four. So now the fun part, we have to take this negative four to the negative two power. All right, so this part of the problem definitely confuses a lot of students. 
And uh, in order to do this, well, we need to understand a basic formula uh, for powers and exponents. So let's go to take that step, which of course is first having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't you just like the way I kind of sneak that in? Well, I have to sneak it in because I need your support, right? I'm trying to produce these videos to help you out and learn math. Uh, really what I'm trying to do is to make math uh, less intimidating, okay? And uh, the way math becomes intimidating, quite frankly, is when it's taught in a real kind of monotone manner. Uh, hopefully I don't do that. I try to break this down. I, my kind of main idea is to teach math not like a textbook, not like, you know, in a classroom. I'd like to explain math and break things down in really small steps so I, everybody can kind of understand what's going on. So hopefully I'm doing a decent job. If you think, yeah, I missed you too, math man, you're not too bad. Well, if that's the case, the best way to support my work is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's get back to this problem. So here is where we're at. We have negative four to the negative two power. Well, in order to figure this thing out, we need to uh, understand the formula for negative exponents. So this is typically taught in algebra. So if you haven't seen this, if you haven't taken algebra, uh, you may see this in pre-algebra, but here is the formula. Now the formula looks a little bit scary, but it's not that difficult. So it's a to the negative n is equal to one over a uh, to the positive n. So when you have a power to a negative exponent, what we can do is write this, um, it's equal to one over this power, but now notice the exponent goes from negative to positive, okay? That's really important. Matter of fact, let me show you a couple examples of this. Let me erase this right here. So we really understand this. So if I have x to the negative two power, the formula says just put this over one. Okay, one will be my numerator and then write the power, but without, I'm gonna change it from negative to positive. So that's gonna be x squared. So x to the negative two is equal to one over x squared. So that is the formula. All right, let's do something else. How about uh, three to the negative two power? Okay, what do you think that's gonna be? Well, that'll be one over three squared, okay? Now, one quick thing about this formula, I can really get into this because uh, this is confusing. If you have something like this, one over x to the negative two, okay? Another way to think of this formula for negative exponents is the following. If you want to uh, change the power, or sorry, not the power, the sign of your exponent from negative to positive or positive to negative, all you have to do is pick the power up and put it to the opposite side of the fraction bar, okay? So in this case, if I want to uh, change this from x to negative two to x squared, if I put this up in the uh, numerator, this would be x to the positive two over one, okay? So when you take a power and you move it to the opposite side of the of, uh, fraction bar, the sign of the exponent changes. That's why when you have x uh, to the negative two, Really, that's x negative two over one, that's a fraction. So I could just put this whole thing down in the denominator and it becomes positive over one. So that's a good way to think of this formula right here because you're gonna see it used in various uh, you know, uh, problems where you do have negative exponents in the denominator and you can't typically in algebra, your teacher's not gonna want to have your answers uh, with negative exponents. You need to uh, kind of resolve those so you have positive exponents. All right, so hopefully you understand that. Now we can go ahead and finish this problem up. So we have negative four to the negative two is gonna be one over negative four, right? This is our base. We're not changing this. We're just changing the sign, okay? So we still have the negative four to the positive two, right? So you don't wanna get confused there. Our base here is still negative four. All right, so now we just need to simplify this. And let's go to do that right now. So one over negative four squared. Again, that negative four is a parentheses. So that's gonna be negative four times negative four, right? So one over negative four times negative four. This is a positive, which is 16. So this is one over 16. All right, so hopefully this was an interesting little problem for you. Now, if you are having a tough time with powers and exponents, or if you thought this problem was a little difficult, then what you need to do is review um, all the properties for powers and exponents. Okay, there, I only showed you one in this particular problem. There's like four or five off the top of my head. 
So let me give you a couple quick suggestions. Uh, first of all, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel that you can check out. But uh, if you are kind of starting off on this stuff, you can check out my pre-algebra course, my Algebra 1 course. Powers and Exponents are taught in all of these courses. Matter of fact, even my Algebra 2 course course uh, as well. The links will be in the description to these courses. Now, if you are getting back into math, you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I just need to kind of review the basics. Well, then check out my Math Foundations course. That's a quick little three-chapter mini boot camp on basic arithmetic. Uh, that's a great kind of start uh, starting point. Uh, for those of you that want to get back into math and if you want to recapture all those math skills that you lost uh, you know 20 30 40 50 years ago check out my math skills where you build a course i teach all these concepts to include basic math as well in that course but uh anyways with that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures thank you for your time and have a great day